What's going on everybody? This is Tony from Strictly Better MTG coming to you today with a casual blue-black control list. This was a lot of fun, so we're gonna go ahead and dive right into this spell list. We've got 33 spells main board, starting with four copies of Duress. You could run Thoughtseize, but we're trying to keep it down to a budget, so feel free to substitute if you've got them. Moving right along, we've got four copies of Brainstorm and four copies of Impulse. This is going to let us dig for our, our answers whenever we need to, and since they're both at instant speed, we can do it again whenever we need to. And since they're both low-costed spells at one mana and two mana, respectively, we can usually end up casting those answers as soon as we uh, dig for them and end up needing them. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those answers. We've got four copies of the original Counterspell. This actually is fairly cheap to pick up on TCG Player. You can pick up a couple copies for around a dollar a pop. After that, we've got four copies of Dissolve. Very important again. It's going to be our other Counterspell piece, as well as letting us scry to fix our draws. After that, we've got our removal pieces. We've got two copies of Far and Away. It's very important because we're going to be able to Excuse me. We're going to be able to bounce a guy, an edict something, make them sacrifice a creature for 5 mana, or we can cast it for 2 or 3 mana respectively. Very useful all the way around, just a lot of versatility on that card. After that, we've got the more flexible deck slot. is going to be 2 copies of Heroes Downfall. I highly recommend just the 2. If you've got four, by all means, put four in. But if you don't want to spend the money for the other two copies or don't have the other two copies either way, two will usually do just fine. It's just extra protection against Planeswalkers versus the mid-range and control matchup, as well as against aggro in mid-range. You can have that targeted removal spell, and that's very handy to have. <clears throat> if you're not going to run four copies of Heroes Downfall, this one is running two. We've got two copies of Murder for, again, targeted removal. Very basic and simplistic there. After that, we've got two copies of Murderous Cut. We're running two copies of Murderous Cut because you can usually delve it down to two, sometimes even one mana. And that's just invaluable to remove a creature at those kind of costs. Not much explanation needed there, either. After that, we've got three Crux of Fate, which is fairly expensive, but still cheaper than the better option for a board sweeper for us, which is going to be Damnation. If you've got Damnation, again, feel free to substitute, but we're keeping it to a budget here. And if Crux of Fate is still too expensive for your bank account, you can go with three copies of Whelming Wave, which is cheaper even still, at, uh, I think, about 75 cents to a dollar a copy. So... Yeah, Whelming Wave. Definite possibilities there. Just make sure to adjust your mana base accordingly since it's going to be double blue instead of double black. After that, we've got two copies of Corrupt. This is again a flexible, a flexible, <laughs> flexible, a flexible dex, dex slot, <clears throat> which could go between two Corrupt or two Consume Spirit. I went with Corrupt because I was planning to build with one copy of Urborg which will turn all our lands into swamps and therefore give Corrupt some synergy and be able to hit for quite a bit. If you're not going to run the Urborg, feel free to switch that out for Consume Spirit. You can still cast it for the same kind of great effect. It's just going to be more mana intensive, so you won't be able to leave up those counter spells and removal pieces that we'd rather have open. After that, we've got our one copy of Aetherling which is our basic standard control win condition here. Not that it's legal and standard, just that, that it's a fairly standard card to see in a control deck. Especially in the casual format. Moving on to the land base, we've got that one copy of Urborg. Again, it's a $10 land. If you don't want to run it, I would recommend running four copies of this next land, which we're running three of to start with, and that's going to be Halimar Depths. We're not running Temple of Deceit, so I still wanted us to have Scry Lands to help us plan our draws and whatnot. Since we can Scry three off of Halimar Depths, but it only taps for blue, there's a little give and take 
but either way, it's not hurting the deck too much to not have the extra black sources. We still have a total of 11 black, and that's usually more than enough to get us by. So let's get to those black sources. We've got four copies of Bad River, which is our budgeted choice over Polluted Delta. You can swap any of these out for Polluted Delta, but I ran, went with Bad River and I've kind of been running on the <laughs> rolling on the river. It's really helpful and helps fuel Dell for that murderous cut and helps thin our deck out so we aren't drawing quite so many lands, though you do still want to draw them. After that, we've got four copies of Drowned Catacombs to give our deck a dual land base. It'll come into play untapped as long as we control an island or a swamp, which shouldn't be a problem for us. Aside from that, it taps for a blue or a black, and they're fairly cheap to pick up versus, I think it's Dark Slick Shores or something like that. Uh, that's a fairly expensive dual land to pick up, that's why I didn't run that, along with Watery Grave. Watery Grave would have been nice to run, especially in conjunction, in conjunction with Drowned Catacomb, but again, it is fairly expensive, so if you don't have it or don't want to spend the money, I can't blame you. So let's move on to the sideboard. We've got three extra win conditions here, two of which are going to be Perlink Ancient and a second copy of Aetherling. So, yeah, Perlink Ancient. Very useful in the control matchup and even certain mid-range builds because they may be running counter spells, as we've seen in our current standard format. I believe it's Teamer mid-range that still runs copies of uh, Disdainful Stroke. So we wanted to have something like Perlink Ancient that couldn't be countered it also has the added benefit of having Flash. It has prowess, but you don't pay that much attention to it. After that, we've got three copies of Negate. This is going to be for the mid-range and control matchup to help counter Planeswalkers, which you'll notice we aren't actually running any of. Again, we're doing this on a budget. Uh, let's see. We've got three copies of Reality Shift here, and that's going to be to deal with those indestructible threats. Since this is the casual format, there are plenty of things out there that grant indestructible, as well as cards that just have indestructible on them. And having Reality Shift is a targeted removal spell for the aggro matchup. It helps us exile those indestructible permanents. It's just really handy all the way around. Well, those indestructible creatures. After that, we've got two copies of Despise, which is going to help us rip creatures or planeswalkers from our opponent's hand. This is mostly for the mid-range matchup. Then we've got two copies of Drown in Sorrow, standard aggro matchup help, tool, removal tool. It does help against mid-range, though, because you can take out all their mana dorks, usually, if they're not running Sylvan Caryatid, Caryatid, however it's pronounced. After that, we've got two copies of Aetherize, mostly against aggro, again. Granted, it does have its use against mid-range because you can still return all these big bomby guys that they just played back to their hand. And that's still very useful in slowing them down and helping you make it to the late game so you can play your win conditions and your corrupt or your consume spirit. And that's going to do it for the board. After that, let's throw up our uh, rating system over here. As you can see, we've got fairly decent ratings in some of these important categories like our versatility and really high resiliency and post-board rating. After board, we should be prepared to deal with just about anything that we're playing against. There are a few things that we just can't deal with, and that's the two or three turn combo wins. You can pull off a win with uh, Duress and Despise in there, but there's just no real guarantee because it comes down to luck of the draw and how well you know the combo you're playing against and how well you know your own deck. Uh, the deck is fairly consistent though. It usually does exactly what we want to do, which is counter things and remove things and make it to the late game, play our win condition, and just ride it out. <clears throat> Aside from that, uh, part of the reason for a high consistency there is we have those four copies of Brainstorm and Impulse, which lets us dig for those answers that we need whenever we need them. Again, just very versatile and useful in keeping things consistent. Well guys, that's it. That's been 
casual blue-black control. Thank you to Weston Rob for requesting this. I hope this helps you out and you have a lot of fun playing against your friends across the kitchen table or in the back rooms at your card shop. Oh, that's right. Gotta mention the price. So the actual overall price for this deck list is going to come in at around 56 and some change if you leave it just as it is unchanged. If you throw in the sideboard, that's going to up it to 60 bucks even, pretty much. It was 59 and some change. I'm rounding up to, say, 60 That was with free shipping and everything, and I did all this on TCG Player before shooting. And for 60 bucks for all this power and so much fun, you really can't beat it. Especially since it's casual, it's never going to go out, it's never going to rotate, you're never going to have to worry about anything. And a lot of these are common and uncommon spells. You probably already have some in your collection, or your friends do, and you can trade for them. It should be really easy and really fun for you to put this deck together and just go nuts with it. So, I'm going to let you guys go do that, and I have to get started on another deck tech because we've got... The Dragon Tempest combo. I've been, me and Devin have been arguing over this and trying to make a deck that works. I believe he's going to do something that's very uh, creature based, like strictly red for it, and just playing all the one drop red guys he can to make it happen. And I'm going more of a green red to try and ramp into things. It is a bit of a teamer one though, because when we board, we're basically going into more of a teamer aggro feel with some morph combo. It's not going to be very cheap, but it's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys have anything else you'd like to request, please leave those in the comments below. In the meantime, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and feel free to comment about other deck suggest other uh, deck other card choices for this deck, such as Planeswalkers or the more powerful spells like Damnation, Cryptic Command, Thoughtseize, uh, what else am I thinking of? Snapcaster Mage, just there's so many powerful spells in this casual format that you can use to boost this power and all of its abilities and effects along with change up things you can change out a win condition for a consuming aberration and work off milling them to death through that along with just having a giant creature and protecting it there's so many different things you can do so i really hope this helps you guys out and you have a lot of fun with it because that's what casual format is all about. It's for us magic players to sit back and have fun and just play magic. So let's get back to that and I'm going to see you guys next time. This is Tony from Strictly Better MTG. You guys have a good day.